When you flip a coin, the probability of getting either heads or tails is always 0.5. When you roll a die and you're hoping for a number 3, the probability of getting a 3 is 1 sixth. The same for every other probability or number that could appear on these dice. If I ask you to pick a card, the probability of choosing any specific card is 1 in 52. When we know all of the potential random outcomes for a probability distribution, we can then assign a probability to each outcome. To explain this, let me go back to something that we already know about, which is a frequency distribution. A frequency distribution is a count of all outcomes that a random variable can assume. You see in the first column, we have the word outcome and then numbers representing potential outcomes for the question, how many tests out of four did you pass? Zero, one, two, three, or four. The second column, the X column, lists a count of how many students passed zero, one, two, three, or four of those tests. A probability distribution starts with a frequency distribution and then tells us the proportion for all outcomes that a random variable can assume. Again, you see the outcomes and the X values are the same as they were previously, but now we have divided each X by the total of 172, giving us proportions which can act as probabilities. There are two required conditions. Every individual probability must be greater than or equal to zero. And the sum of all of the probabilities must add up to one. So those are probabilities based upon frequency. There are, however, other probability distributions. And so we need to look at probability distributions for discrete random variables. This week, we're going to be focusing on discrete random variables. These are variables that can only assume whole numbers or integers as their potential outcomes. Next week, we'll be looking at continuous random variables, which are variables that can occur within a range of outcomes and can contain decimals. For discrete random variables, we've learned that those variables can be either finite bounded, limited by a minimum and maximum, or may be infinite, unbounded, ranging from zero, potentially, up to infinity. The probability distributions that may occur for finite, discrete, random variables are uniform, in which every potential outcome has exactly the same frequency, bivariate, in which we will cross-tabulate two variables, or binomial, in which the outcome can be one of two potential outcomes. For infinite discrete random variables, we will use a Poisson distribution, which models occurrences over time. And we will conclude with the hypergeometric distribution. Next week, we're going to look at continuous random variables. We will start with a uniform probability distribution, which will be similar to what we've learned about with discrete random variables. Then we will learn about an exponential probability distribution. And finally, the most important distribution in all of statistics, the normal probability distribution. To illustrate these discrete probability distributions in basic business statistics, we're going to have a business of the week. This week, we're going to be consulting with Dante's Divine Comedy Store. Dante's Divine Comedy Store is the premier comedy club for your afterlife after party. No matter which of the nine circles of comedy you land in, you will soon be in paradise. Let's see what Virgil and Beatrice have in store for us as we explore expected values and variants for discrete random variables.